my name is Rafi Rose. I'm the founder of IRU. Super pleased to be here with Gina, who's a CDFA, which stands for Certified Divorce Financial Analyst in New York. And today we're going to be talking about um, how to determine and define whether you're in a financially abusive relationship um, and what to do with that knowledge afterwards. Now, we're not here to scare you or alert you or, you know, create any red flags it's really to understand what does it mean to be in this kind of, you know, uh, abusive uh, financial relationship. We're not talking about on your physical health. We're not talking about, um, you know, uh, domestic violence. We're really talking about on the financial side of it. And then what are the strategies that you can create? What are the strategies? What are the things that you can think about? Uh, you know, how can you, you know, create some strategies in advance while you're thinking or separating? Um, you know, what can you do in advance that will help you throughout your divorce process to ensure that you have this perfectly crafted post-divorce life that will make you happy and that you can move on as an independent individual? So thank you, Gina, for being here. Uh, really looking forward to your strategies and for your uh, wisdom. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. This is near and dear to my heart because right now I'm dealing with three different clients that are in these type of relationships. So some of the signs that you may be in a financially abusive relationship is, are you just given an allowance, you know, just so much money to buy groceries, to buy things, even if you are making money and putting your whole paycheck into the, into the family pot, um, are you questioned every month when the credit card statement or the bank statement comes in? What'd you spend on here? Why did you go to Target and buy a gift for your, your child's gift party, you know, party you have to go to? And another thing is maybe they prevent you from working outside of the home and they want to have, oh, you don't need to work. I can handle everything. But then they're very scrutinizing, like I said, over all the expenses and what, and what you're spending money on. Um, or maybe they just, you just don't know your name is not on any of the, the properties, you know, you just don't know what's going on. You don't know exactly how much income is coming in, how much the expenses are, how much is his, you know, hunting habit or his, uh, his, his, his country club is really costing the whole family dynamics. So I think it's very important that if you're not having a, uh, at least annual discussion with your partner about about your finances, this could be a sign that you could be in this type of relationship. And when you're trying to leave this type of relationship, it's very difficult. How can you even pay for somebody like me or, or, you know, or somebody else to make sure that you're identifying everything? If you don't know what it is to, to live in a house, how will the expenses are, how can you identify it? So I think the first thing is if you're preparing to leave one is, if there are any documents that you see, take copies of them, take pictures of them, get, get them. If you are on the bank accounts, go to the bank and get a copy. Even if they're digital, you can call the bank if your name's on that, name's on the mortgage. Gather as much information as you can. Also, another important thing is to run your credit report just to make sure that you know that there's no debt or anything else taken out in your name that you might not be aware of or uh, a recent client of mine, um, um, Paula, she got her credit report and his credit card that had been open 20 years, somehow he put her on his credit card. So there was $10,000 of debt that she wasn't even aware of. Um, so those are the things that we want to make sure you want to try to gather as much documents before you even approach this process. And then when you're in this circumstance, you want to talk to friends or family members that can, can support you. You need an exit plan. You need to make sure you know how are you going to live with you or yourself or your children? Where are you going to go if you have no access to money? And, th and that's scary. And there's a lot of organizations out there that can, to, can help in those circumstances. But I think the most important thing is to educate yourself as best as you can and try, you know, like I said, my friend Paula, who was making copies that didn't understand what she was looking at, but she, she gave them to me and I was able to look at the taxes and I was able to explain things like one year he had investments, the next year he didn't, where did those go? You know, so those are the little things that someone like me can help with, but you truly want to have a plan in place. You want to, to know that 
that, you know, maybe you can even stash some cash, you know, like if you have access to cash, just to, to have that little cushion. I mean, I have been paid recently by three or four parents just to help me help them get out of the relationship. So I think the most important thing is, I know it's hard to discuss, but discuss it with either another professional or trusted friend or family member. So you have the support when you're leaving this type of a relationship. Sometimes, and I've seen many times um, in my professional experience, uh, individuals who are saying and are very fearful of leaving because they say, well, I'll never have money to do anything. And sometimes we feel that because maybe you're living on an allowance or maybe because, you know, the spouse has been, uh, you know, holding on to the finances and all that. But Yes, you have to check your credit. That's number one, because it's happened very often that suddenly something ends up on your name. Um, and sometimes there are other things that are on your name that are actually to your benefit and to your advantage that you didn't really know about. So one of the uh, strengths that you have is that when you work with someone like Gina, who's a neutral person, who's not here to you know be on any one side, who's really here to explore like your whole financial situation, can provide you with ideas of okay, so maybe you can get some uh, you know some income from this or some income from there, or maybe there's a property that's under your name, and you can use some of the revenues from that. Sometimes when we don't know and we're very blind into the situation. Situations very important to speak to someone who specializes in a divorce and understands what are the consequences and what are the steps of the divorce and what happens after divorce. So after you've signed your divorce degree, what happens after that point? So it's really important to have that strategy. And another is to explore all different options. And I always say this to people: most important thing when you're going through your divorce process is never to rely on your friends and family for advice. They are going to not be neutral. It's very biased towards what they would do and their situation. Their paradigms are going to be thrown in. Their fears, their worries, and what they would do. But if you're not them and you don't live like them and you don't have those fears, they're going to instill new fears in you. So it's very important that you use your friends and your family for support to be there for you, to make sure that you shower every day, that you get out of bed, that you take the kids to school, that you're smiling, that you're happy, things like that. That support system. When it comes to your financials, you speak to a financial individual. When it comes to real estate, you speak to a realtor. You have to work with different people because you're in such a precarious situation right now where anything can happen. And if you make the wrong move, you don't know what the consequences will be later on. And once you've signed that agreement, sometimes and more often than not, there's no going back. And you'll never be able to reverse it or change it. So do your homework, do the research, be like a private investigator, do everything you need to do now. If you have any questions, if you're contemplating divorce, if you're newly separated, if you're in the process, whether you have an attorney or even better yet, before you have an attorney, make sure you speak to Gina. I'm sure she'd be delighted to help you out and give you some guidance some direction, where to go, what to do, what to think about, what are the next steps and have that confidence, that peace of mind knowing I did my job properly. I really went and and, and really um, analyzed my financial situation and I feel very confident to take all of that now and go to an attorney and have it drafted up because I know that my lifestyle is going to be a part to what I'm looking for. I know that I'll be able to afford it. I know, you know, it makes sense. And that's what you need at the end of the day. So thank you for Gina for opening us uh, and sort of like making us aware of new situations and things that we may not have thought about before. Um, and thank you all for watching until the next time we speak. I wish you all a day that matters. Take care, everyone.